Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to see how this microwave sampler works. We are going to see the block diagram, how it works and understand its behavior. Let's go! So guys, I designed this microwave sampler here for our 10 GHz source project. This is the sampler that we use to down convert the signal of the VCO to close the loop on the PLL. And what is the idea of a sampler? A sampler is like a mixer that works by harmonic multiplication, but it works on the time domain. And working in the time domain, it enables us to down convert a signal using a much lower frequency LO. Let's see how it works. So guys, the PLL of the 10 GHz source works like this. We have the VCO generating 3.33 GHz and this signal will enter the sampler using a much lower frequency LO that will be close to 100 MHz and the sampler will down convert the VCO signal to a much lower frequency IF. The IF here will be close to 12 MHz. So we can see that the sampler uses harmonic action. Actually, in the time domain, it uses aliasing, as we're going to see, to down convert a microwave signal using a much lower LO here. Because it's actually down converting the signal using an harmonic of the LO. Let's understand how it works in the time domain. We can imagine that we have the VCO here, a switch that is the sampler, and a holding capacitor to hold the sample of the input signal. Here we have the output, okay? Let's say here you have a 3 GHz signal. The LO is 99.6 megahertz okay so this switch here is opening and closing at 99.6 megahertz each time the switch closes it stores a sample of the input signal the microwave signal on on the capacitor and the IF signal here will be a signal much lower in frequency in this case here it will be 12 megahertz because we have 3 gigahertz 99.6 working at the harmonic number 30 2988 megahertz okay so the difference here the down conversion signal is 12 megahertz okay let's see how it works so guys let's say this signal here is the 3 gigahertz signal of the VCO, okay? This is the 3 gigahertz signal. This signal here is entering the sampler, so it enters the switch, the holding capacitor, and here it generates the IF signal. Let's draw the IF here in blue. The switch will be closed and opened at 99.6 megahertz, okay? This is the LO. Let's think the switch closed and it holds it in the capacitor a sample of the 3 GHz signal, okay? It holds, oh, let's draw in blue, because the IF is in blue, okay? Nice! So the signal is being holded. A lot of cycles of the 3 GHz signal happens, much more than this, much more than draw it here, okay? A lot of cycles happens, and the switch it closes again. Now the switch it clo closes and it get a sample here, okay? So now this voltage here is being stored in the capacitor. A lot of cycles happens and the switch it opens and closes again. And now it holds this sample here, let's say. Again, it happens again. It happens again. And what's happening here is aliasing. Because we are sampling a signal with a much lower sample height. This causes aliasing. And in this case, aliasing is our friend because we are down converting 
the very high frequency signal in a lower frequency signal. We can see that we have more or less here a down converted signal. We can see it here. Yeah, we have a down converted signal. The frequency of this signal here, the IF signal, will be in this case 12 megahertz. Right? Because this action here in the time domain is equivalent in the frequency domain to a mixer, where the 3 gigahertz signal enters and where the LO is a comb in the frequency domain. So here in this case 3 gigahertz, it falls, let's say it falls here. So it's being so it's being down converted by this LO frequency spear here. Okay? If it was 2 gigahertz, let's say here, it would be down converted by this frequency domain signal here. If it was 5 gigahertz, it would be here and it would be down converted by this tone here. Okay? So this time domain action here, the aliasing in time domain is equivalent to mixing the signal with a comb. A frequency domain signal that has a lot of tones equally spaced apart. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Let's see how we construct a circuit that makes it happen in real life. We have the 3 gigahertz signal entering here. And the first thing that happens is that the signal is applied in a diode bridge, okay? The diodes are the switch that will connect and disconnect the 3 GHz signal, the microwave signal, in the holding capacitor. The diodes are the switch, okay? What happens if we place here two resistors, two holding capacitors, and here is the IF output. You can see that we are starting here with a balanced topology. This is important, we need a balanced topology, a symmetrical topology to isolate the signal that will be switching the diodes on and off. Because we don't want the signal that will make the diodes on and off to go out to the IF. The IF needs to be only the down converted signal. This is why we need a balanced structure. And we started with a balanced structure here. We have two diodes, two holding capacitors, C hold here. And we have this balanced structure here with two resistors, so we can sense the IF signal of the two holding capacitors at the same time. In this input here, we have the 3 gigahertz signal. And guys, let's think what's gonna happen if we apply a differential signal very fast on these two nodes here, okay? These two nodes here are called strobe. This is the strobe positive and this is the strobe negative. We need to apply a signal Differentially here, the strobe signal needs to be differentially. The strobe signal is what's gonna turn on and off the diodes of the sampler, the switch of our sampler. If we don't apply any signal in the strobe lines, nothing will happen and the diodes are not conducting. So the switch is open here. Think that this here is a switch. You can think of the diodes as the switch and now it's open. Now guys, let's imagine that we apply here a very fast pulse here, a positive pulse in the strobe line and in the strobe negative line we apply a negative pulse. This is very beautiful. 
the pulse will be coupled by the holding capacitor and will make the two diodes to conduct. You can see this because here you have a positive pulse that will be coupled, you will forward bias this diode and this diode will also be forward bias by the negative pulse here. Now the two diodes are conducting current and their resistance will be very low when conducting current because now the diodes are on. The two diodes on, now current can flow from the strobe line to charge the holding capacitor here and also to charge the holding capacitor here because the resistance of the diodes when, when they are conducting with the strobe signal is very low. The diodes will become two small resistors. The small signal resistance of the diode. So the microwave signal can charge the holding capacitor now. When the strobe pulse finishes at this moment here, the two diodes stop conduction and the circuit becomes open. Now that the circuit becomes open, we can read the voltage stored on the capacitors through this path here. Now we discharge the capacitors through the IF line. Beautiful, this is truly beautiful. And this cycle will repeat and repeat. A new strobe pulse will come on the strobe lines. The two diodes will conduct, turning itself in a very small resistance. Now the microwave signal can charge the holding capacitors. The strobe pulse will finish. The diodes will open. And now we can read the voltage stored on the holding capacitors through the path of this resistive combiner here. And here we have the samples generating a signal with a much lower frequency. Yeah? <laughs> Beautiful! The most important thing here in this setup here, let's draw the diodes again here, is that the strobe pulse needs to be precisely differential. They need to be equal and in opposed direction. So these two pulses here will cancel on this node here and at this node here. The strobe positive and strobe negative signal will generate zero volts here and zero volts here. This is why we need a balanced structure, a differential structure. So the strobe will not be going in this direction and also not going to that direction because they will be cancelled because they cancel each other because they are equally but in opposed directions. How we generate these very fast strobe pulses? Let's see. I will redraw it again here. Let's draw it here. Here we have the other holding capacitor. And to generate the very fast pulses, guys, we are going to use a step recovery diode. The step recovery diode will be placed here. And to generate a differential signal here, we can use a balloon, a current balloon. So, this is, this is complicated, but it's very interesting. We have here one part of the balloon, and here and here we are entering with the LO. The other side of the balloon will be here, and we will connect here. Actually, here we have a jumper. Yeah, this is the circuit, guys. The single-ended LO signal will enter here, okay? When it is in the positive section here of the sine wave, it will generate a positive exciting signal here and a negative exciting signal here through the differential signal generated in the balloon here, okay? The balloon the balloon is balancing the signal, it's generating a differential signal 
from a single-ended LO signal here in the input. The positive signal here will be coupled by the capacitor and will not conduct the diodes because the diodes will be in the reverse direction here. We have negative here and positive here, okay? But the step recover diode will be conducting current, okay? In the negative cycle, now the polarity reverse and for a brief moment, the step recover diode will conduct current in the reverse direction. But in a brief moment, all the charges in the intrinsic region of the step recover diode will recombine and the impedance of the step recover diode will suddenly be very high, go to a very high impedance state. When the impedance here collapses to a very high impedance, this opens, okay? And now all the parasitic inductance of the balloon will generate a very strong and very fast pulse here and here a very strong and very fast negative pulse because we have leakage inductance in the balloon that will push current because the inductance don't want the current to change abruptly but the impedance of the step recovered diode changes if the impedance here changes and you have an inductance forcing current like a current source the voltage here will suddenly go very high, very fast. This surge voltage is what will conduct the diodes because now we have positive here and negative here. Now the diodes will close and now the holding capacitors will be charged by current of the microwave signal. Okay, guys. <laughs> I know it's a bit complicated, but it's a very interesting concept. And uh, I think I'm working on this for more than three months now to make it work because in the paper here in the whiteboard is very beautiful, but make it work in the real life <laughs> was a pain. <laughs> I just released the schematics of this design here on the Patreon account. You can go to the comment section or to the description of the video to see the Patreon account. You can support the channel to help us bring more projects like the 10 GHz SOAR. I just published in the Patreon account the full schematics and the layout of the sampler of the 10 GHz source. Okay guys, the frequency tripler is already working to triple the 3.33 GHz signal to a 10 GHz output. This is another module. We need to make the final VCO and the PLL loop to control all these modules here, okay? Thank you for watching, guys. Go take a look on the Patreon account. Thank you for all your support. This is the first video of 2022. 2022 will be a pretty nice year for us here on All Electronics. Thank you for watching me. Thank you for learning electronics with me. And I see you in the next All Electronics video.